When you hear the word Apple computer, what comes to most people's minds is class personified. Now, imagine going to your Apple elitist friends and telling them that you've got an Intel based MacBook. Damn! I know, right? The kind of reception that we'll get will most suddenly make you want to throw it away and this is because Apple has a knack of making their previous gen products feel like a relic once they release their latest and greatest, in this case the M1 and most recently the M2 MacBooks, all of which are Apple Silicon based. Well, that asks a really interesting question. What is it like using an Intel based MacBook in 2023? Buckle up and let's go for the ride. Having used it as my daily driver up until late 2021, getting it out of its resting place brought back so many memories. Straight from the get-go, I noticed the difference in heft compared to my M1 MacBook Pro. Opening it up, the streamlined more tapered design of the chassis felt sleeker but also reminded me how I got into the dongle life since it only has two USB-C ports and a headphone jack port compared to my M1 MacBook Pro which has three USB-C ports and I'll be delving into that in just a bit. And by the way, one of the USB-C ports acts as a charging port where runs on my M1 MacBook Pro, we've got a MagSafe charger and a HDMI which are blasts from the past and a headphone jack port to cap it off. Trying to get him, it dawned on me there's no longer a fingerprint ID scanner that I was used to on my M1 MacBook Pro, so I just had to contend with typing in my password. With everything up and running, we might as well talk about the display. I was surprised that 13.3 inch Retina display that uses IPS technology and maxes out at 500 nits of peak brightness wasn't that far off the 14 inch Liquid Retina XDR display of my M1 MacBook Pro that uses mini LED technology and can hit up to 1600 nits of peak brightness. In all honesty, for the average consumer, this wouldn't be noticeable, but for the graphic designers, the video editors and the likes, the XDR display of the M1 MacBook Pro will give you needle-like precision when reviewing and editing your projects. Speaking of editing, we might as well see how it does and also take a deep dive into other performance metrics. This being one of the biggest driving factors when buying any computer, the question remains, is it really that bad when it comes to performance or is it just hype from the latest and greatest bandwagon? Well, here we go. You might already know the specs, but just to bring you up to speed, this is a 13.3 inch 2017 MacBook Pro with 2.5 GHz dual core Intel Core i7 processor, an Intel Iris Plus graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage, and runs on macOS Ventura 13.2.1. I know those specs don't make any head stand, but nonetheless, let's put it to the test. Like promised earlier, I promised to delve a bit deeper into the USB-C ports, and for starters, the ones on my Intel based MacBook Pro have the slightly dated Thunderbolt 3 ports compared to the Thunderbolt 4 ports on my M1 MacBook Pro and this was clearly evident when plugging in my dongle. The read speeds on my M1 MacBook Pro were slightly faster compared to that on my Intel based MacBook. Now, where the night and day difference comes is with the processors. My 2017 13.3 inch MacBook Pro uses a 2.5 GHz dual core Intel Core i7 processor, which they used to outsource from Intel up until they switched to Apple Silicon, which is used in their M1 MacBooks onwards. Here's the kicker. If you're buying a MacBook to help you with simple computing tasks like browsing the internet, watching movies on Netflix or YouTube, writing Word documents on Microsoft Word or Pages, then all those tasks require very minimal CPU talk and if that's where your use case ends, then getting an Intel based MacBook Pro would make sense especially when you factor in the price, which I'll be talking about a little later in the video. Where the Intel best MacBooks start to heave is when you introduce moderately intense tasks like photo editing on Lightroom Classic and when you take it a notch higher to tasks like editing 4K footage, that's when the fans start to throttle and the dreaded wheel of death will most likely make a cameo at this point. If you're crazy enough to cross uncharted waters like 3D modeling or rendering, you might as well grab a fire extinguisher cause the fans will be raving like crazy and chances are, everything would be frozen at this point. Now to save me the drama, I don't intend to push my unit to that extreme, hence the reason why when it comes to power hungry tasks like those, my M1 MacBook Pro or Mac Mini come in clutch and for the record, not even once have I ever had the fans kick in. 
When it comes to consuming content, my Intel Best MacBook has a decent speaker, but nothing compared with those of the M1 MacBook Pro. But then again, for the average consumer, this wouldn't be that big of an issue. As for the camera, it's got a 720p camera, which was decent when I hopped onto my Zoom meetings, but nothing compared to the 1080p camera of my M1 MacBook Pro. Moving along, another area that is crucial when it comes to any laptop's use case is battery life. After fully charging it the previous night, I was able to get up to 9 hours at about 60% screen brightness, all the while taking it through tasks like web browsing, photo and video editing, writing the script for this video, etc, etc. For the same use case on my M1 MacBook Pro, I was able to get up to 16 hours, which is nearly twice the time I use my Intel based MacBook. Just from that, we can see how much of a difference the Apple Silicon technology brings to the MacBook Pro line. Moving along, next up is the price. By far the biggest determinant when making the decision to buy a new MacBook, the Intel based MacBooks are quite affordable and for as low as 450 Australian dollars, you can get yourself a unit. For Spectre version, you'll have to part ways with about 1400 Australian dollars, which if you'd ask me wouldn't be worth the investment as you can get an M1 or M2 Mac Mini and use the remaining cash to buy peripherals like the monitor and keyboard. Something to note though, before making the purchase, make sure you know your exact use case and this is because the $450 MacBook will just be able to perform basic tasks. And the last thing you want is struggling to edit a video on your timeline, which may result in you punching your laptop out of frustration. Speaking of frustration, the fact that I switched to my Intel based MacBook for a day, I knew it would be coupled with a few issues owing to its old technology, but thanks to clean my Mac, I was able to configure the items affecting my Mac speed, monitor CPU load, and this was crucial knowing that I was going to push it when performing tasks like editing 4K footage. It's also enabled me to remove junk generated by my computer system and apps, delete malware agents like keyloggers, spyware, etc, etc, all resulting in the ultimate Mac user experience. Use the links in the description box to check out their store and product page and just a disclaimer I get a small commission out of this so check out the link to support the channel. In conclusion, these are my two cents. Using an Intel based MacBook may not be the most optimal choice for users, especially now that Apple has transitioned to Apple Silicon, which began in 2020. In this period, Apple has shifted its focus to developing and improving its ARM based processors for Macs, and as a result, software support for Intel based Macs may become limited in the future. While some users may still be using the Intel based MacBooks, they may experience performance issues with newer versions of macOS and software updates. Additionally, as the technologies become outdated, it may be difficult to find replacement parts and accessories for these older machines. So for those who are still using the Intel based MacBooks in 2023, it may be time to consider upgrading to a newer model with the Apple Silicon architecture. And this is because the latest Macs offer improved performance, longer battery life and compatibility with the latest software applications. That's it for now peeps, if you've got to this point of the video, comment MacBook down below and don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see how good my M1 MacBook Pro has been over the past year, check out this video. People of the internet, I'm signing out, see you on the next one.